beyond Fahrenheit. Welcome to another episode of Federal Speaks. Yo, this is a very, very, very important and special episode. We have some very special guests on this particular episode here to discuss part two of last week's conversation and kind of like the reverse, where we're going to allow the Black women to ask Black men any question that they want to ask, and we are obligated to answer it as honestly and truthfully as possible. So, yes, I think this particular conversation is important because, again, as with last week, we gave the women, a, the Black women, an opportunity to have their voice heard. But equally, we need to hear from their counterparts because we know last week some stuff was said that may have ruffled some feathers. So we definitely want to give the men the opportunity to be heard and to respond to what was said and actually have some of the women's questions answered to the point where they can feel like they're walking away understanding and knowing us better um i know last week we had some young men to watch it and they walked away like yo i feel like i know black women better so hopefully we can have the reverse for that where the women can feel like yo i feel like i know my brother my uncle my nephew my husband my boyfriend even my incoming potential partner better so again i uh definitely encourage everybody to lean into the questions lean into this particular conversation because it is going to be a good one so without further ado i want to introduce my guest we have none other than my big bro maurice maurice would you take the time to introduce yourself hey everyone i'm maurice Gu. Uh, i'm an attorney uh, I've been practicing law for a while uh, in Chicago for 20 years. Uh, I am the father of twins, uh, Thaddeus and Torrance. Uh, one is an aerospace engineer, the other one is a interior architect. Uh, both are working, well, one's working and one's finishing his master's. Uh, I am a community activist. I am Federal's mentor, uh, as well as uh, mentoring other uh, teens uh, and a youth finisher. Uh, I'm glad to be here and, you know, uh, we'll welcome all incoming questions. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Like, like, like you said, that, that's my mentor. So y'all take it easy on, you know, that's my home. <laughs> that's my home. All right. Um, next up, we have none other than Delicia Gibson. She is an executive board member on, of the Paint the World Project which is an organization that is under the, that Federal speaks is under the umbrella of the Paint the World Project. So we definitely want to give her an opportunity to speak her piece. She's going to be uh, facilitating or co-facilitating this conversation where she's going to be the primary person answer, asking some of the questions that we receive from various um, Black women um, across my, my network, as well as we're going to hear from the Black women that are here today. So. Without further ado, I want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, Delicia. Hi, I'm Delicia Gibson, and I welcome everyone. I am so looking forward to this conversation because I think it's a lack in our community where we give the Black man a chance to speak his mind and share his feelings. So I'm here to support, ask the questions that some of the women have, and hey, let's go. Let's get it on. Awesome, awesome. And I also want to second what Mia said. You looking good, girl. Looking good. Looking good. Snap, snap. Um, next up, I'm going to introduce my other big bro, Tao Spicer. He's, man, this man does it all. I'm going to let him introduce himself. But I'm definitely going to have this man. Y'all will be looking out for him because he's going to be back on the show to kind of talk through, talk through some of what his specialty is, which is coaching and development and all that other stuff. But... Without further ado, why don't you introduce yourself, Tao? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to jump into these questions. Uh, yeah, my name is Tao Mitch. I go by T-Spice or my coach T-Spice on all social platforms. And I'm a mindset coach, a speaker, and an author, author of the book, Have the Guts to Follow Your Guts, Why Playing It Safe is the Biggest Risk of All. And I'm on a mission to inspire and empower one million people to live a life by design instead of by default. I'm having a really great uh, uh, a blast doing it. You know, a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Great guy, great guy. Y'all definitely be looking out for him. Um, none, next up, we have my sister from another mister. Uh, I love her dearly. We go back 
like baby's a pacifier. I feel like that's my girl. Um, none other than Joy. Joy, why don't you introduce yourself? Every time you say something different, we go back like babies and pacifiers. Uh, my name is Joy Frierson, and um, I love being on these panels. Like, this, these have been so great for me. So I'm just so excited, so excited. Thank you for asking me to be a part. Um, I've known Federa, I think now, probably about three or, three or four years. Um, I consider him a big brother, I consider Maurice uh, a big brother. So um, I'm just excited to be here. The last conversation was so enlightening for me that um, I cannot wait to hear what the men today have to say. And yes, I will take it a, a little easy on you for Daryl, just a little, okay? You know what? Give it to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, I ain't gonna need to say take it easy, give it to me. Because here's what I really want to know what's on y'all mind. Like when black women are an enigma sometimes to me, like how y'all move and operate and think. So I definitely like hit it, hit it hard. I want to know whatever questions y'all have. Like don't don't spare me and don't spare these fellas. Just I chose <laughs> the men that I believe can handle it. So yo, bring it, bring it. But next up, uh, we have none other than Mia. Mia, why don't you take the opportunity to introduce yourself? That's my girl. That's my heart. She's definitely a sweet spirit. Go ahead, Mia. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to be back and to be a permanent fixture on the panel. I'm excited about this discussion. I'm newly married. So me and my husband had these conversations all the time. And I want to just you know, get a feel for what other men have to say and their outlooks and because the last discussion was really, really enlightening and it was fun to have. So I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome back, Mia. Last but not least, we have the Petersons. Am I saying it right? Is the Petersons right? Yeah, it is. Yes. All <laughs> right. We got the power couple and the Petersons. Listen, now that I'm going to do a little special introduction because <laughs> the girl Erica came through and she shook the table last week. So listen, it's very interesting to have her counterpart, her mate here. So we definitely want to hear from them. I want to welcome Theran and Erica to the show. Why don't y'all introduce yourselves? Uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself first. Hi, um, hi you guys, I'm Erica. Um, I'm returning again. Uh, yeah, last discussion was very fun um, and very interesting. Um, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me again. And I'm ready to hear what the men have to say so that we all can be a healing community. <laughs> Amen. Well, my, my name is Durant. Uh, hearing my wife uh, of what, seven months now? Yeah. Hearing my wife of seven months, you know, speak with such a uh, sage, such wisdom, you know, uh, you know, inspired me to come, you know, come on this panel. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to uh, have our insight spoken about so awesome yeah. awesome welcome Theran and Erica it's great to have you guys again I'm re really looking forward to to it so um let me see I think that's all I really had to say in terms of introduction uh, forget to who I forget Tara Walton. oh Tammy I thought I got you Tam <laughs> I, on my screen I thought I got you I can't forget Tam that's that's my Harvey. You already know. Damn. <laughs> Why don't you take the opportunity to introduce yourself? Looking all pretty and stuff over there. Welcome, everybody. I'm Tammy. I am so excited to be here. I have been a supporter of Paint the World since it came out the dirt. So when you just began me, I'm going to just give you a one-two on the camera. Okay? <laughs> it's okay, though. I'm very excited to be here for our second part of this conversation. And let's get this started. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, Tam. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with the PWP since it was the a seed in the dirt. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So did I get everybody? Did I everybody got got? All right, cool, cool. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. All right, so without further ado, what I'm going to do 
is pass this mic over to Delisha, who's going to be facilitating the questions for the men. I don't know what some of these questions are. I didn't even read them. I just passed them on to her. So, yo, this is definitely about to be a, a kicker for me, too, because I'm, <laughs> I'm interested to know what y'all have to say. So without further ado, go ahead, Delisha. It's, it's on you, mama. You mute. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Fadera. I am so excited. I'm coming out the gate with the first question. It's like a multifaceted question, but it says to the Black man, how do you see, view, live, adjust, maintain, change, grow in the world today as a Black man? Five, five questions in one. So how do you see, view, live, adjust, maintain, grow, mature as a black man in this world, as a black man? Maurice, can we have the answer? Wow, that is a lovely <laughs> question. I think, first of all, you know, with respect to me, it becomes being centered. Um, you know, there's there's so much going on these days that you have to be centered. And for me, that center is my faith, uh, you know, uh, in Jesus Christ. It is, uh, for me, family, friends, you know, making sure that um, they're well taken care of. And then one thing that I've discovered about myself is I take care of other people, but not necessarily myself. So now it's actually some self-love, some self-care. And being a little selfish at times, you know, for myself, it's something that I've had to learn. Um, what were some of the other questions? I, I think that was change and grow, mature. Change and growth. Uh, I think that both of those can come from uh, your involvement in various activities. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I mentor or help with teens, uh, and one of the things that you know, with dealing with young people, they keep you young, uh, they keep you in the know, uh, but they also challenge you to be your authentic self because they can tell when you're being fake. Uh, that's one of the, that's one of the, the one of the ways I stay young. I mean, it's, it's just that. And then as far as growing, you know, professional uh, relationships, um, relationships with things that put me outside of my comfort zone, uh, various challenges uh, i think that you know i think there was a conversation earlier about growth uh you i think you mentioned about tj but you know i believe that all living things grow and if it's not grown it's dead and i think it's dr miles monroe said at one point in time that uh, a lot of people you know they stop living at 21 and they just get buried when they're 64. so i mean one of the things that of course we have to do is to continue to challenge ourselves and continue to uh, put ourselves out in such a way that uh, we inspire others as well. Thank you for that answer. I appreciate it. Now, Tal, since you work with um, people in general, everyone across the board, specifically, how do you see the Black man and his mindset and how he handles change and growth in, in this world that we live in today? Is it harder for him from your vantage point and your viewpoint? Or is it um, depending on your environment, how you grow up? I mean, all the encompassing, what, what do you have to say? Right, right. I think it is particularly difficult for a Black man. I, I do have an idea that, that was coming up as you was asking the question. It is that resisting change in an ever-changing environment, the universe that we live in, is misery, Right. So my answer to the question is changing my relationship with change and growing and getting excited. Like I literally hear the words, get excited when something is difficult, when something is not as uh, I'm used to experiencing it because I get to explore a different part of myself, a different version of myself. And I believe that every version of myself is going to be an improvement, right? It's going to be a step towards my ultimate lifestyle, my ultimate experience. Um, I think that gratitude and, and like Marie said, grounding yourself and being, you know, really full and present in the moment, right, is also a huge part in your ability to grow and adapt and change to different things because 
you know that there is so much right to to fill your cup up in the present moment and as you change and as you grow you get more to be grateful for right so being grateful for what you have opens you up to being grateful for what you have to gain in a changing environment which is going to change whether you like it or not right so get with it or <laughs> get lost yes. be miserable right we don't and i don't think we don't we don't we don't want to be miserable but it's fear that keeps us uh from moving forward in these major major ways yes yes good answer good answer now for daryl since you moved to california was it different what did you have to change your mindset being living in Chicago and adapting to California as a black man, because California does seem to be a little bit more liberal in their thinking, in which my opinion, Chicago is a little bit more segregated in their opinion. Hmm. <clears throat> That's a very interesting question. Um, definitely, I would say that I've, even during the pandemic, I've managed to run into a set of what I'm going to call challenges as a black man, just um, being in a predominantly Hispanic um, and white uh, environment and really having um, a time really seeking out my own community. Um, it definitely left me feeling like the other at times. Um, and the pandemic didn't help because seeking out uh, community, you know, became even more difficult because everybody's quarantining and everybody, you know, when you're the new guy, nobody really wants you in their face because they don't know you and so forth. So, um, yes, I think California presented some challenges that, um, to Tao's point, has forced me to grow and develop as a man and to become even more resilient um, in my oneness as a Black man being surrounded. Like, I live literally a block or two away from the Korean community. And then, you know, like, I'm in the art district, so then it's, like, predominantly white. So at times, you walk out and you're like, okay, well, is there any of me around? Um, so um, you go to the gym and different places you go where you can see limited faces, like to your point, that is different from Chicago because we know where the black communities are. We know yes. where to go. We know exactly where to find our peoples. We know what they doing, what time they doing. Here's a, <laughs> a little bit different. Um, so um, that growth, has been facilitated, I'll be honest, by therapy, by by counseling, by my mentor, Maurice, just having somebody to, to lean on. As a Black man, I do believe that is relationships are important. Um, leaning into your relationships um, is important. But to Tao's point, I said this and shut up leaning into difficult times I couldn't I could there were so many times I wanted to run back home <laughs> and say okay pandemic then shut down all my plans I'm going back home let me just do the Chicago thing all over um try it again but you know I had to lean into the difficulty lean into the challenge lean into um the areas that did not feel comfortable and I think as black men we do that often um and the the especially those who have a, a master of self you have to be able to lean into the difficult times because you're gonna run into challenges everywhere um as a black man the, the man the 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 bullseye is on our backs right now it's been on our backs for a while so avoiding those challenges are almost it's almost impossible. So yeah, leaning in is usually the best route for me. No, hey, all right now. And I just want to encourage you. I mean, you already know this, but I think that you've done a bang up job in adapting yourself and acclimating yourself <laughs> to uh, uh, in California. And even like you said, even though you've had the bumps in the road, you know, you're coming out and you're being shiny and that gold ring, you're being buffered but you're withstanding it. So kudos to you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> and Theran, um, as a, a young couple, 
Um, the next question that they had was, as a black man, do you feel the need or obligation to only have romantic relationships with someone of black ethnicity? So basically, do you only want to ride or die with the black woman? Or is anything game? And if it is, <laughs> is it your, just your preference? Because we talked about that last time. <clears throat> Inquiring <laughs> minds would like to know. That, that's an amazing question. That is a wonderful question. Wonderful question. Uh, to be honest with my personal preference uh, is a black woman. Now, if you if you speaking of somebody I want to build a life with, um, somebody I want to raise children with, somebody I want to just I don't know grow with, you know, uh, that's a black woman. Now, for the rest of the men in the world, you know, I think you know when it comes to you know other relationship having fun. You know, it's free game like that. But when it comes to building, when it comes to building, you got to be with the black woman, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I think it's important because she understands my situation way better than uh, any other race can because uh, she's seen her uncles, uh, brothers, fathers go through every situation that I'm going through or been through or will go through. So I think it's imperative for uh, a black man to be with a black woman, um, at least in my case, because um, my my grandmother, my mother, they they are all black. And they I'm able to relate to them, so that helped me relate to my wife. So uh, even though she's my wife for seven seven months years, seven months she my soulmate of forever. You get what I'm saying? So that's how, that's why I'm I'm super grateful to be with a black woman. It's, I, I adore black women so much because of what they offer. And they, uh, they allow that room for me to grow. Cause uh, she, she taught me how to, uh, to, I'm sorry, to go back to the first question, just to, you know, tap in the first question. Okay, okay. Um, she allowed me to grow. I dealt, I dealt with a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. um, and she allowed me to grow. Uh, when I started uh, running, started doing like marathons and stuff like that. Uh, white people stuff and she she looked at me crazy then she supported me uh, <laughs> then she you know she allowed me to get into uh, uh, yoga and without judgment she allowed me to go through therapy without judgment when the whole world was judging me I came home and she was she was she was not only my peace but she was my she was my rock so with her being able to allow me to spend that time to to open up and experience new things so I can be at peace, you know, uh, that, that, that really made a, a big impact in my life. And not only did she support me, that made me strong enough to continue to support her. Cause as us as men, I'm pretty sure y'all, y'all can all relate. You go out, you go out into the world, you deal with whatever you're dealing with at your job or at your business, whatever the case is, you're dealing with, you're dealing with the people and we know what we deal with especially when you're working in these non-diverse environments um, that, you know, you fight in the world and you come home and you just want to come home. She give me 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes before she even tell me anything's wrong. The house can be on fire. I'll sit down. I'm not going to find out until like 30 minutes later. She's like, just relax, go ahead. And that's why I think it's important to be with Black women. Now you're going to come right. All right. All right. <laughs> that's yes, yes. And Maurice, I am so curious because you are an attorney, and that is a very power-driven uh, Caucasian, whatever other race um, that it, you want to say. But being an attorney, you are really put in an environment where there are different races of women. Um, did, did that ever change or did you ever have a, a, you know, a preference where you didn't want a Black woman and that the opportunity was given to you to pick another race or seem more appealing? Well, I've definitely been given opportunities to to take from other women. Just by, I guess, the nature of what I do uh, at the level I was practicing at, it's predominantly, you know, white men, white women. That's not going to court, federal court. It's usually maybe myself or maybe another black person, whether they're uh, it's a male or a female. Uh, I'm the only one. I mean, we're the only ones that sit in there. Um, but as far as preferences, 
my preferences usually has been to date black women. Uh, am I open to other women? Yes, based on what I, you know, what our, our uh, you know, if we sink or something like that. Am I, you know, I, one of my friends used to always, female friend of mine, she always tell me, hey, you have this long application of all these different, you know, criteria or whatever. And I was like, well, it's not really that. It's, it's sort of a, let's get to know each other uh, first. But with respect to just the women in, women involved, women free, I would just say, you know, my sons, you know, they were, uh, my wife, I was married, uh, and I'll share this, I was married for 13 years uh, to a black woman. Uh, professional black, uh, doctor degree, mass, two masters, all that. Um, and it's so interesting because my son, I was telling Federal List the other day, uh, my sons were, they had, I guess, a harder time, I guess, dating. They were trying to date black women, but they had a harder time dating black women because the black women didn't seem to want them, uh, based on the fact that they were like, oh, they're nerdy. I said, yeah, I said, but as I was telling Vadero, I was like, look, the reason, the, the way I raised them was to be one, good providers, uh, be professionals. And I said, particularly, I used to tell people, I'm raising my sons for Black women because I've heard before that Black women, you know, some Black women, that were, I come from a big family. And they were like, hey, you know, as far as the men, you know, I, I would hear, they're no good, not from my particular family, but you know, I hear from other women, they're no good men, they're the men, all of the men are gone. It's like when I raised my son, I was like, hey, this is I'm raising them for you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so that you have something to pick from. You have a professional you can pick from. And what I found was, or well, listening to them, is that they had a hard time because of black, they said like, we tried to date black men, we want to date them, but they don't want us because they're saying, hey, we're not like, you know, we're not wearing tan. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. And so, you know, I found it kind of disheartening is once one actually told me the one that uh, the aerospace engineer, he was just like, you know, he said, well, I'm driven. And, you know, I'm finding that, you know, the black women aren't, you know, the ones I'm eating, they aren't driven. And I was just like, wait, hold on. I said, that's not true. I said, it depends on where you look. I say, are you looking? Uh, what what are you looking for first of all, and then where are you? Where are you looking? The vicinity that you're looking. And so I had to check him with that, but I, I understood his frustration because the other women were approaching him, just like you know they approached me, and it was a matter of preference, I guess, at that particular point in time, and, and what you wanted to deal with. But I said, don't say they don't have this, they don't do that. I said you have to you put yourself out a little bit more and go into different areas to try to find it, you know, who it is you're looking for. I said, because they're out. I said, you just, you know, it's just a matter of, of really diligently seeking them. I said, but they're here. Okay. Very, very. And that's why I asked you because I, I mean, you know, I know that environment, like I said, of being an attorney, you know, you will have that opportunity to, you know, the courts and everything and all just the way it's structured, you know, most likely. But are they now dating Black women or are they still? Uh, one not? is dating. One is dating. Well, he's dated Black women. Both of them are dated Black women. Okay. Just, I think that some of the other women usually pick, you know, a lot of Asians pick one of my sons um, and uh, Caucasian women pick. Uh, and, you know, it's At this point in time, you know, I'm like, hey, look, it's, you know, I understand, but, you know, don't give up on the sisters, you know, just, you know, you got to just put yourself out more. Yes, I, I must agree. I must agree. I must agree. Can I jump in there? I just yes. want to raise a point now. Listen, and I want <laughs> this for my Black women, because it's fellas out there that fit the description. It's plenty of fellas out there that fit the description of what Maurice described in regards to how he's raised his his sons. And so I want to encourage black women to, to not be obsessed with a caricature of the black man 
um, and some illusion of what you expect your black men to be without definitively marking the great qualities that come in him that may not line up with all of the qualities that you may expect or see on TV. Not all brothers like wearing Tims and Jordans and everybody not watching the game. And some this brother is an arrow, whatever. Listen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who got time to be sitting watching all this other stuff when you arrow something, you know, and you trying to develop a career, you know, for potentially a woman, prefer preferably someone who can relate to you and understand you, but the ones that you feel should be able to relate are rejecting you. That is a real, real thing that I think Black women need to know and understand that I found Black women who will reject good Black men because they do not fit a certain t stereotype. And to drive the point home even deeper, last conversation we had with the women, they drove at us hard for not choosing them, you know, or 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 ended up with another woman of another race. This is how that may happen. This is, if you want to know how that may happen, reject it, black men, go find a woman of another race who's not going to reject them. And you should know that. So true. So true. I must agree. But, the, you know, one thing I do want to say, like we did say the last one, that is the I've learned that the preference is smaller than the bigger piss, uh, picture, the ocean, I will say. It's, it's bigger. And, and unfortunately, we do have like his two sons, you know, but the thing is, is that that's a small, minute unfortunately, you know, play women that they've run into. But the majority of us, I will stand and say flat-footed that we support, we love, and we cherish our Black men. We want them to thrive. We want them to grow. We want them to stand in mental capacity to know themselves. When they come home, we know what they've been through when that cop stops them. We know what they've been through in the hood when the game tries to bring forth. And we know those things. But like I said, you have those small percentages. I've heard it because my son, he's 31. But the thing is, I, I put him in a diverse environment like Maurice did with his sons. And yet the ones that, you know, wanted him and wanted to talk to him were always Caucasian or Mexican, and the black girls did not want him. But I always had to let him know and understand that the black woman loves you and will always love you. And I want all the men on here to know that and say that resoundly and loud again. We support you, we love you unconditionally. We might have our flaws and our flaws and rolling our necks and everything, but at the end of the day, our black man is number one in our sight, so. I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> and um, I'm going to ask uh, me. I saw your little finger coming up here. Well, before before, before okay. Mia jump in, I definitely want to recognize Janelle Nichols for joining the call and giving him the opportunity to introduce himself. Go ahead, introduce yourself, Janelle. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm John Nell. I'm so glad to be a part of this discussion on today. Thank you, my brother, for Daryl, for the invitation. Sorry for being late. I had a huge monkey wrench coming to my schedule on this afternoon, but um, I'm glad to be on and to be a part of this conversation. And let's keep it going. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, John Nell. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. We're going to toss it back to me so we can hear from some of these ladies on this panel. What y'all guys say? What's going on? What's your question? Um, I just wanted to say, like, it is disheartening when you do hear about um, young men not um, finding it easier to um, find their counterparts, um, you know, like effortlessly due to the fact that um, they may be a little geeky or techy or nerdy or whatever, you know, whatever you want to say it, however you want to call it. It's... Um, I know that my brother struggled with it when we were younger because he was really intelligent and book smart and, you know, like 
he ended up changing and shifting as the years went by just just to just to grab the attention of the sort of girl that he wanted but um i also want to throw out there to the fellas you also have to recognize that it has to be a generational it's it's a generational thing and it's a curse actually because black women were we were not raised to seek the man um, off of finance, off of status, off of, you know, like everything that, you know, like when you, when you, when you encounter um, your other counterpart, female counterparts that are of other ethnicities like Caucasian or Latin or whatever the case may be, Asian, they're taught and bred to seek the man that has the status. They're taught to seek the man that has the money. The, the, they're taught the, to, to, to breed with black men that can either turn their children into football players, basketball players, baseball players, and that have the money, that have the money to sustain. Like, you know, they, they, that's what their families bred them to do. That's what their families raised them to do. And so I believe that black women, from the time we are little girls to the time that we get older, we're taught to love black men unconditionally. So, it's just something that you also have to recognize that sometimes, yeah, they might, they might, other ethnicities might be seeking you because they're genuinely interested. But nine times out of 10, they're seeking you because of the fact that you have the stature, you have the finances. It's a little something extra. It's an extra something behind it for them in order to seek you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's nothing that they can actually relate to you about. That you know they they don't know you how you grew up and what the kitchen smell like on a Sunday morning, what hair grease smell like burning on the back of her neck with a hot comb. They don't understand those cultural differences. So when you come home and you have a conversation with that person, they can't relate to you. And they were, but most of the majority of them were taught to seek men. Of stature. Okay, so I'm gonna push back, Mia. <clears throat> I'm gonna push back a little bit. Um, in it that while I do believe that women of other cultures are maybe encouraged to, you know, seek men of different statures, I do find that if a black man feels rejected by a black woman that rejection can sometimes be pressed up on top of other issues and other insecurities and then so it it can then make the black woman appear more of a an opponent than someone that's there to help and or assist because while you said we you know you want us to understand the challenges that it, it takes to be a black woman and while you understand that you know it's difficult to be a black man it's only until there the guards are let down on both sides and the offenses stop on both sides that we can ever even come together to realize our level of compatibility sometimes it seems like we're so easy to mark the things that you don't have which is what i was saying about maurice's son they they sound like great young men but if he don't got on the jeans, if he ain't driving this, and if he don't have that, we found, and I would tell you as a black man, I've heard where a girl would discount you quickly, a black woman would discount you quickly for not having that status that you're saying that the other people look for, the other races look for, but I've also seen it where black women would say, child girl, he only good for some dick. I he not good enough for anything else but to pop my cherry and get my hair done. 
And and so you'll find women collecting men, <laughs> just like men may collect women. Collecting men, he do my hair, he get my hair done, he keep the rent pay, he keep. And this ain't foreign. I know this ain't foreign. And and you give him a little bit, you give him a little bit, you give him a little bit, and then you say, ain't no 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 good men around for you to give all of that to. Ah, uh, yeah. So I don't want to throw that out there just as a rebuttal. It's it's not always that the 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 other races are looking for that status. There's something in black women that also desires, you know, a certain level of status too. That also comes with, and I'm saying this shut up, a hyper, oftentimes this desire for a hyper level of masculinity, for a hyper level of uh aggression. You know, I've heard women say, hey, he don't love me if he ain't slapping me and, you know, calling me out my name and so forth. That's not coming from other races. That's coming from my sisters. But go ahead, Joy. I want to give you a chance. I was just going to piggyback off of, actually, off of what you said. Um, I was going to jump in and say, you know, not to, I, I'm a Black woman, but let's call a spade a spade. And that's what you did. Um, for Daryl is we also have some women in our community who do that same thing. Um, not taking away from what you said, Mia, but um, that we also have women in our community who are bred the same way. To for Daryl's um, other point about it's not until the walls are down on both the side of the woman and the man that because if a woman says, you know, this man can't do nothing for me, but A, B, and C. And then if he feels that way, he will either go to another race or he will become the man that uses her. And then if she feels that, then she will become a particular type of woman. So it's like a never ending cycle. And when, to your point, when you said it's not until the walls come down on both sides, unfortunately in our black community as a whole, for men and women, what 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 did your they used to say? Don't it, um, ain't nothing wrong with you if you sad. You know, don't just act like ain't nothing wrong. Keep going. They do that to the women and the men. Um, therapy. Don't 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 go to therapy. You need to pray. Let the Lord handle it. What well, Jesus say? Hey, I'm Jesus till I die. But therapy works as well. Um, and so when you have those community stereotypes then you have two people trying to come together that are broken in this same community they don't know how to communicate with each other at the same time and i'll put myself on the soil y'all know i ain't got no problem doing that as you get older your perspective changes you know like fadero said when i was 19 15, 19 20 years old yeah, he got to be packing. He got to be driving. His his status got to be this. Now at 47, I, you can have all of that. But if you're not healthy, if you got mental issues, if you are broken, if you are, that's not going to bring a healthy relationship to me. You're not, you're not going to present somebody to me that I can want to support, want to love, want to... Um, as Theran said, his wife says, you know, okay, she might look at him sideways, but she support him. You're not going to present somebody to me that, that makes me want to do that. So then I, that makes me a different kind of person. So then do I, somebody said this, do I, I change who I am to accommodate the situation? But is that healthy still? No, it's not. So yes, Mia, there are other races, other women, they do do that, but at, at, black women do it as well. So we have, and I love my, I love a black man. Like for me, I, it can't no other color come in my face, but a black man, but we got to call a spade a spade. It's not just other, sometimes we as black women, now sisters, please y'all don't disown me, but okay. <laughs> sometimes we as black women, when a man, when a black man turns away from us, they ain't done nothing. That's all us. Either our attitude, 
inability because we change and we grow and we have emotions and we have this. Men do too. So we expect men to be patient and give us grace when we change and when we grow and when we this and when we that. We got to get the same thing to them. But a lot of times it's black women. We don't, because that nigga needs to know and that man needs, no. Sometimes it's us that pushes them away. So we can we can put their, the onus on them, but we got to take responsibility for the part we play in it as well. And that's all I'm saying. All right. Amen to the hallelujah corner. Real Tal, quickly. you had something to say? You had a comment? Oh, boy. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Do I? Y'all got me cooking up so many ideas and, and perspectives. So much has come up um, from what you guys have, have shared. And I, I want to express again how grateful I am to be in this collaboration of consciousness right now, because I feel like there is a string between everything that we're saying. And I, I guess I want to start off by just jumping back to the original question uh, as far as... Um, if I'd be open to dating another race, if I feel obligated, I think it was a direct question. And my answer is, uh, if you ask my mind, right? I, logically, yeah, uh, I'm open. You know, I could you know, entertain different races, different ethnicities and things like that. But if you ask my soul, if you ask my soul, I, I, need, I need a black woman, right? For a, a lot of the same reasons that you, you mentioned, you know, the, the hot comb, the, the Sunday morning, you know, the oldies, the music, all of that stuff is so meaningful to me. It's my experience, it's my mother, it's my sisters, it's my grandmother. It's uh, all of those things. It's just so meaningful to me that I don't see myself sacrificing. I don't see myself connecting in the same way. And it's, oh my God, there's so many things I want to say because there is that other element that the, the, there's a black man who is actively avoiding black women because of their attitude, because of their this, because of their that, because of the, and what I have to say to that, there's two things actually I have to say to that is that um, we like to attribute human characteristics and target black women as if black women are the only ones that can have an attitude or only ones that can feel like their back is against the wall. Like granted, the way society is set up, there's a lot of you know white people who are privileged to not have to face the same things that black women have faced. Um, but put in those same circumstances, their patience is gonna be a little bit short, a little bit thin given the same situation. You know, if we go back to slavery where, where there was uh, buck breaking and, you know, black women were made to feel like their their man couldn't protect them and their feminine, your feminine essence, your feminine energy needs that protect protection that, you know, that covering you, that we got you, that, that you know, ability to provide all of those things are, I think, uh, basic, basic needs uh, of just the feminine energy. Now, women definitely vary and, you know, different femininities and that's very fluid. Um, but I, I think that it's important to understand that when that masculine energy isn't present, right, it must come up in the theme, in, in our women, and they're not particularly happy about that. Right. So it's it's easy for men to attribute negative traits to black women because they're not, you know, they're not being received with that feminine energy. But it's also the other way around. If the fem if the feminine isn't feeling that masculine presence, she's going to reject it as well. Right. So I think it's, it's a study of human nature and we definitely have things that are unique to us. And, and we're really proud about that. Um, how we can separate ourselves from the world as a unique group of uh, you know, individuals as African-Americans. But there's something deeper and I think more broad happening if you look at the psychology, you look at the psychology of people and the human experience that we have and how that attributes to our, our experience. Like for instance, if you grew up around a, a lot of black women, I did, and you saw attitudes you know, you might just think that all all black women have attitudes. To Maurice's point, it's you know where you look, where are you looking? Also, super important question: What are you looking for, right? Because if you're just out here willy nilly to trying to take anything you can get and you're not getting anything, but you haven't, it's like going into a restaurant and saying I want food and then being and then being mad when you don't like the food. <laughs> you know, it, it's ridiculous. 
Uh, and the second point that I have uh, when it comes to you know black men who are rejecting black women is one I, I'm you know it's your preference live your life do what you want to do I will protect black women against black men who actively slander black women I will do that I will say that but something that that came up for me while you were speaking was just this truth that I have around feeling sorry for them you know and and i think that stems back to for me um as i'm just conscious your stream of consciousness right now live and, and and direct is going back to my earliest uh experiences with black women again my mother my my grandmother my they loved the hell out of me my my the black women in my life adored me right they taught me to be a gentleman they taught me to live in service of women and at the same time you know there's a lot of misogynist uh, black men that's like oh you you're, you're the man you're the you're the prize blah, 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 this and other they taught me to live in service but they also showed me what happens when you do right when you open that door when you are a gentleman when you are thinking ahead and you you protect black women they pour into you they nurture you they lift you up they put you on a platform right um, so when I see a man that slanders black women, I know immediately that his experience wasn't my experience. And for that, I feel pain, right? I, you know, I go up to him and give him a hug because I see myself in black women, right? I, there's the, there's that reflection, there's that connection. And, you know, my current partner, my, my goddess, right? No slander to, to white women. I do love my white women. I love, you know, all races and everything like that. But I love my partner's locks. And the last thing I'm going to say is a white woman, anybody else, they could never. <laughs> they, can't, they could try. They could try. All but they right, could man. never. <laughs> also, I also wanted to say that in, in my business, and you know, what I've dedicated my life to is Black women, right? 99%, 100%, a lot of my, my clientele is Black women. I support Black women. Right. All so right, that's man. what I'm here for. Thank you for that. Thank Just you for that. Definitely. And and Theran, you had a comment. Uh yeah. Um so the Maurice's sons that he spoke about. Uh, in reality, that that his sons are me. Basically. Mm -hmm. So I mean I can't because I, I grew up, I grew up in I'm, Pretty sure if y'all guys are familiar with the South Suburb, I grew up in Harvey. So obviously, you know, Harvey's a real, you know, horrible. Uh, it's a good place and a horrible place to grow up in. If, you know, I'm leave it there. But uh, I grew up with a, with a father and a grandfather, like Maurice said, that he taught his sons not, not how to speak white, how to speak proper, not how to, not how to like basically don't worry about don't worry about being somebody that you're not. My my father, I, I brought this uh, a small uh, story about me. My father, uh, I brought this rock CD in. Um, it's a group called Lincoln Park, and we was in the car. We just got done listening to Jay Z. And it was me, my uh, cousin, and my brother in the car. So I was like, "Hey, Dad, play this." And my dad looked at the CD. He was like, "All right," he put it in. And as he played it, <laughs> my little brother was like, "What is this?" I don't want to listen to this. Then my dad turned around and he said, we're going to listen to it because that's what your brother want to listen to. Mm -hmm. So that small moment, it, 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 it helped me accept who I wanted to be growing up. You know, um, unfortunately, I did I did horrible things. But then, I, you know, in the same breath, I was a nerd that they was talking about. But coming from where I came from and my friends being who they were, I wasn't. I was just I was just by some black women, but just as uh brother Ty was speaking about, uh it's about it's about where you look. Cause where I look, you know, I of course I, if you're gonna go to the strip club, you're gonna find strippers, you know. No disrespect to strippers, but I'm just saying <laughs> if you're gonna go on Cicero, you're gonna find what you're gonna find on Cicero. So the the important thing is to know where you look. Um and I I feel like we all we all misunderstand each other and the important thing for us to do is to 
have these conversations and um, be able to open up to each other. Everybody speaks about self-love. And honestly, if you're not good for yourself, you cannot be good for anybody else. Right. Um, the, import, the importance for us as a, as a community is to be able to talk to one another and teach one another on how we feel, then being able to listen. Listening, had, that I, I, I always heard that term, that's why God gave you one mouth and two ears. Listening is, is very important to a successful relationship, friendship, uh, you know, just being a family member. And that's why, that's what I feel. I feel like I, I, am, I am his son. I know exactly what he's talking about. But I had to, you know, I had my fair share of, you know, different relationships. But it's, there was nothing wrong. Love is love. If somebody loves me, like if somebody loves um, Ms. Maurice's son, right, that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. Yes, they can keep searching, but if they find somebody that loves them for them, no matter what they have, what they do, love is love. I understand that. Me personally, like I said, I love black women. You know, can't nobody do it like you feel me. But at the end of the day, if somebody's treating, if somebody's treating your child right, or somebody's treating your your brother, whoever it is, somebody treating them right, allow them to be treated right. And you know, that's it. <laughs> And I just want to piggyback on that before we get to the next question. I had to learn that for my son, because when he started dating Caucasian and Hispanic girls, I was hot. And but the thing that I finally got to the point was the same exact question that you just the same thing. No matter what race they are, as long as he is loved and cared for, it doesn't matter because he can be dumped on. It, by any black woman or just by any woman. So the thing is, is that if he's finding that, then that makes me happy as a mother that someone is caring for him and that shouldn't matter and color shouldn't matter in that. So the next question I wanted to ask, ask Janian to jump in since he's just joining us. The one question they are asked, women are asking is, why is it hard for men to share their emotions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, wow, that's 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 a very good question. Um, I I would say that um, it could be a part of our makeup, who we are as men, to just internalize a lot of things um, for the from the fear of not being understood, from the fear of being. Um, perceived wrong. Um, so we are, and, and I heard this from someone and I heard it about 10 years ago and I, I'll never forget it. And that is, we are the sum total of our life's experiences, right? We are the SUM, the sum total of our life experiences. And so based on certain things we may have dealt with um, in our upbringing, um, me personally, from a transparent point of view, I was raised by my mom and my older sister, right? L my father was not present in my life. Um, and my mom, rest her soul, she was the best, okay? Um, but her and my sister were um, more so best friends, right? Okay, I, I was mama's boy, granted. But, but my sister and my mother were like best friends. They were Judy's, you know? And so coming up, Sometime I felt as if I did not have that outlet to express, you know, what I was feeling. OK. And then when I did, there were points where I felt like I was being double teamed or I felt like um, I felt like I was the black sheep. Um, you know, I felt like I was just kind of in this by myself, you know, and so. I took those things, again, we're the sum total of our life's experiences. So because of that, when I got older, um, I, it was difficult for me to be transparent about certain things that I was feeling or, or what have you from fear of being misunderstood, being misinterpreted. Um, and so I think sometimes that may be a reason why we internalize things um, also, you know, I mean, as men, we have that 
you know, of uh, as someone expressed about being, you know, just so so masculine. Like we have to, you know, it's it's we don't want to come off as weak. We don't want to come off as, um, um, yeah, as as weak as uh, not having it all together. And so we we try to just put on this facade, like I'm good, you know, mm-hmm. I'm 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 all powerful, not like God, but. Um, I got it together, you know, when we have to find ourselves of getting into get to a place of being transparent and being vulnerable and understand that we can gain strength and not show weakness in being vulnerable and in being uh, transparent. So, yeah. Thank you for that answer. That was a good answer. Uh, Tao, you had something? I do, I do, I do. Ooh. Okay. Um. Actually, I got. Can Can I do something different? Can I hit the uh, screen share? Go for it. Oh, yeah, too late. <laughs> Already doing it. So there, there's something that I saw recently on Facebook. So when you asked the question, it, it wasn't hard for me to go and pull it up. So I'm sharing a screen. It, it says that when Tyrese had a mental breakdown, remember the singer. Um. In regards to not seeing his daughter in two years, people laughed at him and he became a meme. When Kanye West had a mental breakdown on TV, people called him crazy and he became a meme. The world watched Will Smith listen to his wife tell him live that she had an affair and they laughed at him and became a meme. And now we still have this question of why men don't open up about their mental health. And I, I want to say that I'm fortunate enough to have grown up, I think, in a, in a safe space to where, you know, particularly from my father, actually, it was okay to feel, it was okay to be hurt, it was okay to cry. Um, at the same time, I realized that that's not everybody's experience. I see it with other family members and how they raise their kids and they say, don't cry, be a, be a man, you're a big boy, things like that. And I'm like, a, a, that's the opposite, a, a big boy does cry uh, a little boy you know or a underdeveloped a emotionally unintelligent person thinks that suppressing their emotions is the right thing to do but that emotion is going to have to be expressed one way or another so when we talk about toxic masculinity we don't want to talk about the cause of you know this hyper masculine attitude where we associate crying with weakness when i feel like vulnerability is your greatest superpower Right. So you can't ask me why, why that, why that is, but um, I guess a guess would be this need for masculinity where it might, maybe it's been stripped from us, you know, back in in slavery or going back to buck breaking again, that desire for masculine and, you know, having uh, families separated, you know, by the, the, mass incarceration and things like that. And we try to drill into our our sons, our mothers are drilling into our sons to be strong, to be masculine, to be this because there is a lack of it, right? And they don't fully understand what it is, but it's just like, I know when I'm crying, I feel weak, I feel vulnerable and I can't have a a man, a man crying, feeling weak and feeling, feeling vulnerable because if you are, then I'm unprotected without realizing that you're unprotected anyway, that your son isn't going to be your protection, right? I don't know, maybe there's something to that, but that's what's coming up for me. Me me and uh, Eric uh, spoke about this, uh, was it yesterday or something like that? Mm-hmm. But, uh, she asked, she asked the question, why don't men, you know, share feelings? And I had to let her know, well, you know, we don't, we don't share feelings for a multitude of reasons. Like, uh, one reason I, I, I do, I do give her is, um, regardless of how we feel, my, my mindset was, regardless of how we feel, everything still got to get done. So what's the point of even expressing my emotion? Um, what's the point of, of allowing myself to feel these feelings when I can just suppress them, keep it pushed. So, you know, the thing is, is grab yourself by the bootstraps and keep going. So, um, 
we um, we are told that we we're not allowed to feel like as you know as a child, like Brother Sal said, and um, even you know when we get older, when, when you express, there's not too many men in my life. Like I can count on one hand, I can sit here and cry in front of, or even just tell them, man, I'm having a hard day. You know, um, you know, a lot of a lot of my friends or a lot of my family members, they be like, man, that's crazy. All right, keep going. You feel so you you get the that's crazy, or you get the you never get any you know feedback that you that you're initially looking for. So as you as you start to you know feel that over the time you you know get the you get doors just closed on you like about your emotions and even trying to express it to your wife or your you know your or your uh, counterparts you you'll feel like you'll feel weak because you're supposed to be strong for her. So um, the important thing for me was to go through meta. I still work on trying to you know express my emotions and stuff like that, but. Uh, I took on, uh, I tried therapy. Um, I, I took on running and, uh, and yoga and meditation, you know, and praying and getting my Bible. And doing all of that helped me learn how to express myself, you know. And I, some, we can even have a conversation right now, and I just be like, all right, I'm done talking. Because like, it, it, I'm still growing. So it's hard for men to express themselves because that's how the world, the world kind of just like shuts you down every single time you try to express yourself from a child to adulthood. Even when you try to change, people look at you crazy. So then you become isolated. Now you feel like you're not allowed to, you know, share feelings, but you, you feel like, okay, I'm going to share my feelings, but I'm only sharing my feelings to a select group of people. So um, any, anyone that's dealing with a, dealing with specifically a black man that's, that's going through um, a lot of mental issues. Allow him to allow him to grow and allow him to, you know, take time. He might shut down, on you, but just allow him to grow and allow his feelings to come out. He's, he don't want to talk. Men don't want to talk all the time. Men just first of all, we want to get we want to get things done. Um, we work hard. <laughs> it's this quote I heard that men work extremely hard so they can sit back and do nothing, and you know. A lot of a lot of women, they have to do something. They give men honey to do list. Uh, they, they they you know they give they give men a lot, but that that support system that y'all create allow each other to allow each other to grow and give y'all self some time because it's it's hard for for men, especially women too, but it's hard for a man man to to express his emotions. You know, so thank you, so. thank you. Just, just one moment, Mia. Um, Tam, did you have a question? Um, I can make a comment. I definitely agree with all the, the men here on the panel that spoke already. I truly believe that with a good, healthy, critical conversation that you can drive uh, emotion out of your man. Um, it's, it will take some time. I'm not saying that it won't. But if you continue to, one, make sure that you guide that conversation with a good intention, with good heart, you will be able to sustain a um, relationship that is driven with uh, emotional contact from both partners. So men, gradually, they will, um, with, with the right partner and the right person, to, to, to grasp what they need and have a great critical, healthy conversation, you're going to find emotion. You just can't, again, the men just can't release it to the world, nor can they release it to anyone, family, friends. You, you can't. I agree with that. You can't. But again, with the right partner and the right person, emotions will stem from our men. They will. Yes. Yes. I, I agree 100 percent. Can yes. I, can I throw, some, throw something in there? And I would just encourage women that when that emotion is expressed, especially because sometimes it could be so rare to be able to peek into the emotional um, capacity and well of a man that if that ever comes up, because sometimes it could come out as frustration 
You know, sometimes you've been suppressing your feelings for so long that once they're fine, once it hits the fan and, you know, it go pop goes the weasel, you're being deemed as the angry black man or um, someone who's emotionally, em emotionally unstable. So I encourage our black women, you know, just like you cry, understand black men cry um, and don't ever, ever force a man to quail, to quench, to um, ignore his emotions for your comfortability, just because you're uncomfortable with dealing with him in an emotional state. We, I've seen plenty Black women become emotional and had to live through that, it, either nurturing them, supporting them or whatever, um, it's not often that I could say the opposite. To Tam's point, and um, I'm not sure who brought it up, I think Theran, um, when we do show that emotion, it's a real ass moment for us. It is a real ass moment. And so I encourage you to respect that, to honor that, to find ways, as Tammy said, to lean in, to understand, to, to you know, sympathize, have compassion for a man who is wounded. There are so many, and I'm speaking for the wounded fellas out there right now. There are so many wounded fellas. I, I love Tao's story of, you know, having strong women and the father there to, you know, help gird him into the man that he is. Unfortunately, that is not everybody's story. And so you got some black men out there with some real shit, rather it be um, from shit from their fathers or you know, mothers who let them down. And if that stuff isn't dealt with, there's no way he can show up for you whole. If you don't allow him and allow the space and create a safe space. Oh Lord, Jesus Christ. There's a difference between creating a space and creating a safe space. There's one thing to say, hey, I, you say what you want to say and then you clapping back all the time, clapping, clapping, let me tell you, da, 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 da. that safe don't feel, that space don't feel safe to tell you how I feel without you, number one, get defensive, getting offended, and then attacking the brother for how he feels. Um, I encourage a woman, because I know we usually, and women are usually the ones who have a sometimes have a better grip on their emotions or what they want to say. They have already listed out. And so usually you can beat a man up because you didn't thought three steps ahead, you know, and you didn't figure out the argument, the conclusion and where you want this joke at the end. And he ain't nowhere with you. And you didn't knock his head off with all your drama and all your stress. And he's just on step one at computing how he even feels. Not even, you don't have a solution. What you want me to do? I don't know what you want me to do to fix it. I'm just feeling that you being mean, girl. <laughs> that you being rude, girl. That your attitude nasty, woman. And I would prefer to be talking to someone who can hear my feelings without me feeling like, yo, I'm talking to Judge Judy. And everything back, every clap back is something rude. And so forth. That that does not create a safe space for men to feel emotion. So if you want your man to, to or your brother or your uncle or your father, or whoever, because I'm guarantee you, if it's a black man somewhere, he feeling something. Create that space for us, just like you want that space created for you. Go can ahead, I, Tal. Can I say something? You saying a lot of good stuff, bro. And, and I don't I don't want to detract at all. I want to add you know, to what you're saying, because it is super important to not only have a space, but a safe space to express yourself, express your truth, honor your, your being, right? There is, I think, a, a preliminary step, though. And I, I think we all know that it's super important to learn to take responsibility for yourself, first and foremost, to become 
acquainted with who you are and your your emotions, right? To be able to feel it and acknowledge it, you know, even in its its earliest stages, right? Want something that's working really well for me right now in my current relationship is, I, I guess I could call it, hey, something's coming up, right? Something's coming up for me. That that's that's basically saying I'm feeling something, I'm experiencing something, I need to share this with you. And it kind of takes all the pressure off. It kind of sets the stage that I'm going to say something that I'm feeling because I need to express it. I need you to be there for me. I need you to listen. I need you to not take offense to it. Uh, in addition to that, communication is an art, right? So um, my partner, she calls it seasoning your lips with grace, right? Uh, and essentially is just being aware that how you say something is going to either trigger somebody one way or another. And that could deter the conversation and drive it in a direction you don't need it to go in. I know that we want to be able to just say what we feel, how we feel it and just let it out. At the same time, you got to take into account what is the desired result, right? You know, you got to be an effective communicator. Not only that, but you got to be able to uh, to receive and interpret the information properly. Right. You've got to be able to sometimes what your partner is feeling might really hit you, you know, and it's going to be hard for you to not make it about you. But going back to the foundation, if you have a strong emotional intelligence with yourself, you can feel things and not be controlled by the feelings. You can acknowledge, you could be aware, hey, hey, anxiety, I see, I see. Let's put you to the side real quick. We're going to come back to you because my partner has something coming up for them. And once I'm there for them, I know that they're going to have the space and capacity to then be there for me as well. And I trust and I have faith in that, right? I think that anybody listening to this right now could benefit from that kind of that shift. Just go a little bit deeper within yourself, right? Be there for yourself and never, ever, 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 ever assume that it's somebody else's responsibility to manage your emotions. They can be there. They can hold space for you. They can support you. But it is absolutely not ever their responsibility for how you feel. You one big red flag, you made me feel this. No, you were feeling this and I may have already triggered an existing feeling that you was having. I'll take responsibility for that, but it's absolutely 100% up to you to acknowledge what's going on inside of you. You know, so I could be there at my full capacity for you. Yes, I 100% agree. I want, and I was gonna piggyback on what you and Federal just mentioned. Um, being married at a later age, I still had to learn how to communicate. I still had to learn how, uh, Theron said, Erica does to give him that space to, you know, when he's puffed up, not just pounce on him and want to be like, try to solve it. Because we as women, as caregivers, we we actually want to solve it for you. We don't want you to be hurt. We don't, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how we uh, support you. We do not want you to feel the hurt you're feeling, but we also have to understand that being human, you're going to have to feel the hurt, but we have to be patient enough to wait until you want to say, hey, okay, now I want to talk about the hurt. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it yesterday. Don't Didn't want to talk about it 10 months ago, but all of a sudden now I actually want to talk about it. And we don't need to be rolling our neck and be like, oh, you took 10 months. I don't feel like talking to you right now. Nah, that's over and done with. What you talking? Nah, I'm, I'm done with that. No, it's like he's about to open up. This is he's giving me a diamond and a treasure. So when this comes again or it comes up, I know what it is. I recognize it. I see it and I can support it in what it is. But it is hard for me specifically as a woman to take that caregiver hat and mom hat off and not be the nurturer, but let you feel it and work it through before I try to jump in and be superwoman. Because that's what I'm that's what I know to do. OK, I can solve this. <laughs> I ain't got no problem. In sol and I'm going to solve it the way I want to solve it. I'm going to do what I do because I'm a black woman. If that's who I am, I'm strong. I'm going to support you. But at the same time, I can get in my own way. So, for Daryl. 
No, I actually wanted to uh, get a question from Erica since she got Boo sitting right there. We got the Boo <laughs> right there. I wanted to hear one of her questions from her. She been real quiet. Erica, we need you in here, Mama. Like you shut it down last week. Let's get her in. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to get my Boo his time to shine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> good job, good job. He's shutting it down. He making you proud. He making you proud. He is. Um. Well, one of the questions that I had, well, I can definitely relate to you, Delisha, because I was just telling Theran yesterday, I was like, I've learned to just sit back and just like, okay, if you got a problem, just to just let you go ahead and deal with that and not try to solve it. Cause I'm always like the like, babe, what's going on? I can help you. You can do this. You can do that. You can do this. And he just be looking at me like, girl, if you don't go sit down somewhere, like I got this, you know? <laughs> um, but the question that I have is, what can we do as women to better support you um, with your emotions or to help you feel a little bit more comfortable to open up more to us? Like, is it that we can, you know, you know, just that part? I don't want to give any multiple choice answers. Jane, you want to answer that? Yes. Don't take everything personal. I, I would say that's the biggest thing. Um, I, I am currently single, but I've had, you know, a relationship, what have you. And that was, that was one of the, that was a, a big problem, you know, um, my, my, and, and that, and it contributed to my lack of being transparent and my lack of being vulnerable because things were taken personal. And it's like, I can't, I can't be, um, you know, some advice that I, I had gotten was, you know, make sure that, that, you know, when you're in a life commit with some commitment with someone that it's your best friend. And, and I agree with that wholeheartedly that you should marry your, you know, someone that you can be totally, you know, yourself with and, and not have any mask on. Um, but if, if I feel like, um, when I express um, an issue or a struggle or something that, that I may be dealing with, or even something that may be connected with my past, you know, it shouldn't be um, applied. To, if it's something about my past, it shouldn't be applied to the present. It shouldn't be, you know, well, you, you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so yes. I, I think that's, that will be my answer to that question. Try not to take 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 your emotion out of what I'm sharing when I'm emotional, because if I'm sharing out of my emotions or what I'm dealing with, and then you add your emotion into it, then we're going to have an accident. <laughs> so so to avoid that, keep it separate and and be able to embrace and accept you know my truth whatever that may be in that, in that moment um, and try to help li listen first, listen first. And, and then let's go from there and try to help me through it and not take it like a, a personal attack or something that will personally um, affect us neg neg on the negatively, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Maurice, I, I want to hear your viewpoint on that. You look like you're over there just simmering, like you no, know, I, no. I, I was listening uh, to what uh, he said, and I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, it's you know, someone I was married for 13 years, and, and I think part of it was I wasn't as, probably as emotional developed in the beginning, but somehow I found my voice within that fifth, six year, seven year, and so. They talk about men that don't express themselves and things like that. That wasn't me at that point in time. It was like, hey, well, I, we can talk about it. Or, you know, or I would get to the point where I would would say, um, and, you know, don't take offense, but I, I would tell my my wife, my son's mom was my wife at the time, it was like, hey, you know, I understand you're having a, a moment right now. I said, but when you're finished having your moment, let's come back and convene and talk about it. And she thought that was kind of cruel, but at the same time, I wanted to be, have a conversation with both of us, would just be, you know, have a, a clear, a, a clear mind, a clear path, and try to work it through that way. Um, but yeah, I would hardly agree with what you said. All right. Dal? 
Yeah, yeah, I want to tap in on that. I, I want to to echo JN because I think it's super important to uh, not take anything personally. Ever since reading the four agreements, I've you know been stretched in that way because it's like nothing, take nothing personally. And since stretching myself, I've become aware to this truth that everybody's experience is filtered through their own experiences, right? It, what's happening isn't about you. It's happening in them about them, right? You can observe, you can allow this process to happen for them. You can hold space, you can hold safe space for them, but you can't make it about you because like JN said, you're going to make it worse, right? You're going to make it worse. Um, I want to answer the, the question directly as well, though. What can you do to be more supportive? Is, that was the question. Yes. Right. I think that if we're, we're going to talk about a wide range of people, it's going to be hard to say how you can support uh, each and every person. So what I would say is just that question alone, right? Just asking that question alone. Well, first, you can ask, you know, when, when something is coming up, you can ask, hey, do you want support, right? Do you want support right now? Or do you just need a listening ear? Do you just want to vent? Right. And if the answer is yes, I think a really heartfelt question would be, how can I support you? How can I support you? And that that will translate to any individual situation that you may be may have, because I can't paint the whole thing with one one paintbrush. But if you are able and, and cognizant enough in the moment to say, do you need support and how can I support you? I think that's very supportive in itself. Yes. Yes, and I and I just asked, like Fidel said earlier, that we both, the man and the woman, give each other leeway to do that because and learn in a learning curve also to do that because sometimes we just don't know that is the question that we should be asking. I had to learn how to ask my husband, you know, should I be talking right now, or do you just really want to be left alone? And we visit this another time and it, whatever he said, but it, it was hard for me to do that because again, like you said, Tal, that superhero complex and that mothering, you want to resolve it because you don't want the hurt. You don't want the, you know, disenfranchised feeling, you know, that your man is feeling, but it's, it's patience and it's time and it's just wisdom. That that's, those are the, some of the things that I can say. But like I said, it's a big learning curve because you guys are coming from two different environments and you have no idea really and truly what that person's environment and background and do's and don'ts are. And you have to really put in the work to get to know that. But that, like Tao said earlier, a lot of that comes from knowing yourself first and foremost and setting boundaries and what you are willing to do and accept in everything and how you're going to approach it and how you're going to deal with things. For Daryl? Oh, I didn't, I didn't have anything, <laughs> but I would, I would just say that, um, again, I think the, the point of not taking it personal is is critical especially um as from my experience with with black women um and to your point delicia that need to want to try to fix to rush in and fix and rush in and remedy and go ahead get it you know come on you all right you come on and sometimes is the healthiest thing to do is to sit in that feeling and to number one, um, process it, dissect it, not to be rushed out of it, not to even be encouraged to get over it. But to Tao's point, how can I support you as you go through this? How can I support? Because again, we are each an individual. We are individual with individual needs. You may come together in a relationship, but those are two individuals that are making another unit that we are calling a whole relationship that is comprised what, first and foremost, base, 
two individuals. If one individual is, is short, broken down, then nine times out of 10, that relationship is about to lean on, on the person who got the strength. So we need to make sure that everybody has the support that they need. And that's not just in dating relationships, that's in friendships, that's in brotherhood, that's in uh, 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 um, camaraderie where you you are getting to know someone becoming an associate we need all need this space to be who the hell we are usually we can find because and this is just me there's this driving in black culture of control i think we lived in you know just several situations and environments and time periods where we had no control, where losing control can be frightening, you know, especially when you feel like you got so much to lose, you know, and and that little that you have to lose may not be much to compare, but it is something to you and it is treasured to you. And so until that is respected, I am a person like to you, like to your point, Delicia. I got my own history. I listen, you don't know, you don't know really what daddy did or what mama did and what the teacher said and where these wounds and scars are really coming from. Have you met my six-year-old me? <laughs> can you talk to, can you nurture the little boy in me? that was broken, shattered, and still trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in this crazy ass world that keeps shifting and, and, and changing every year, every hour, every second on the second. It is important that I have someone in my space that say, listen, go ahead, feel what you feel. Go ahead, listen, I got you. I'll be here when you come out of it. Usually, you find the opposite. Get over it. Stop crying. What you mad about? Why you you in your feelings? Hey, girl, child, you in the, yes, I'm in my feelings. What do you want a robot? Do would you prefer your brother show up as someone that is still stoic and unfeeling? Would you prefer your man to show up that? then support us give us the space and fellas I encourage us to do the same. We know black women come Many of them come with a lot of emotions, <laughs> a lot of feelings about a lot of things, um, fears, apprehensions. Again, um, I know uh, Erica raised this point. So you shut up. She raised this point several times. I heard her make this point several times, and I think it's a very good point. Is that oftentimes, especially growing up, it could feel like do or die for the black person. Like we can't afford to make a lot of mistakes. We can't afford oftentimes to fuck up our credit and have mama come and bail us out and, you know, go do some dumb shit and make a bunch of mistakes. It's usually do or die. So that anxiety, that stress alone, can make everything seem heightened and urgent and put you on a sense of a, a defense for everything. So again, find a way to disarm and find a ways to help your partner disarm, your mama disarm, and, and, and find a ways to let them know that it's okay to show up to the table without your magnum, <laughs> your bully. Like, I come in peace. Come with the, don't come with the snapping on the neck because that may get your hands laid on you know we yeah because we hey brothers some of sometimes that be too much and I say oh I gotta lie I'm gonna say this because I know we about to end this episode listen that's usually why some of these men go and get a woman of another race because it don't always come with the snapping and the resistance and the aggression and the this that and the other while those can be deemed as very honorable qualities amongst our black women those are often qualities that men are rushing to avoid those are often qualities that come sometimes remind a man too much of himself when you over aggressive girl chill out 
Like, yo, yo, you ain't got to go off at the restaurant every time the meal don't show up. The way. Like, chill out, let me handle it. Hey, you know, I may handle it a different way. Girl, sit down. You know, so I say all that to say, listen, let it, I'm, I'm a strong stickler of letting people be who they are, meeting people exactly where they are, finding the empathy to show up and stand exactly in i listen i'm not in that situation but my empathy allows me to feel what you feel and thereby have compassion and for you if i can't do that then nine times out of ten a person who's snapping on you while you're upset don't feel what you feel so something is wrong if you relating to a person and they upset and they visibly going through and you got the snap on you. I said, shut up, I'm done. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Mia, you had something to say? Oh, you had your hand up? I'm sorry. I had a question, <laughs> but okay. Okay. I had I had two questions and um, this is, okay, my first question is um, seeing as how the rest of the, like other races and the ethnicities have um, sexualized and fetishized, fetishized black women, why do black men do it as well and we were originally your gift to cherish and love anyway and my second question is why um once you get to a level of uh recollection why do you allow other men to sucker you into um over sexualizing yourselves by being a playboy or getting as many women as you can. But then when you go to look for a wife, you say, oh, she got too many bodies, but you're not assisting to the cause. Sal? <laughs> I think Thurman raised his hand first. Oh, did he? Okay, I'm sorry. Thurman? Thurman. Thurman. <laughs> My bad, bro. That's okay. That's okay. Um. So to go to the sec, but well, I'm sorry. What was the first part of your question? You said, "Oh, why do black men oversexualize black women?" Yes, and we were like originally y'all give. So why oversexualize and fetishize over us when we're your counterpart? We're your your equal, and we were created for you. So why do what other races do to us? Okay. Um. To speak as a whole, I would say the reason I believe that that we are coming from being a young man, you know, you you just you do what you see, right? So if other men are over sexualizing women in general, and including black women, especially black women, um, that's what they seen. And um I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull a towel on this. This comes way back. From um, I read this book called Pedagogy of the Oppressed is where uh, they said uh, the oppressed idea of a man is to be like the oppressor. So if the oppressor overly, overly sexualize our women, we we end up doing the same thing. Now not not blaming not blaming like oh we we should have been changed. Yeah, of course we should have been changed. But if your level of thinking is just on that level and it's just straight physical, then of course you're gonna overly, overly sexualize. You're not, a lot of things don't change unless you mature. So if, if you're dealing with men that overly sexualize women and they haven't matured yet, then obviously you're going to, you're going to get that. You know, it's the same thing as it's about where you, where you look and, and who you're around. So if those men are, are, are doing that, you, you're not dealing with a, um, you're not dealing with a mature man at that time. Um, and to answer your second, the second part of your question, can you, can you say it again? I'm sorry. Why do you allow your friends, your fathers, your uncles, cousins, or whoever to sucker you into building, like turning you into a gigolo or glorified playboy 
And then you dog women for saying they got too many bodies, but then you go and sleep with a whole bunch of women that you know you don't have intentions with, good intentions with. Facts, gotcha. Look, so I'm I'm gonna complain. <laughs> <laughs> the man you talk about, I don't care how old they are, they still boys. You get what I'm saying? So it's not about it. Of course, men want somebody that don't ha- that don't have a uh, extensive past when it comes to other partners. Of course, that's the ideal woman to, to a lot of men. But if you're looking at a person, if I'm looking at a person that changed within that time of you dealing with dealing with that, okay, I respect your change. But a lot of like having those other boys influence you on like, okay, hey bro, you should go slide on her. You should go do that. Like me personally, I, you know, I got dogs, but, you know, I was called a cake. You know how back, you know, when y'all, when y'all, when you dating your girl, you like, they like, oh, man, he, he finna go cake, man. You finna go slide on these women with us? Like, nah, I'm finna go chill my girl. Like, you you get called soft, you get called a cake. So if that man is not confident in himself um, not to accept the influence, especially when they got somebody good, or you, even if he's single, you know, you, you shopping, you shopping around, uh, you know, it, it can get difficult for that man because you you know you want to you want to be seen as somebody you know prestigious amongst your friends you know you want to be seen in these other ways like people that's why people flaunt money they they do this they they it's a way they attract the woman you'll see what t- how their character is so um if if I if I'm sitting if I'm driving around and I got I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna pull them I got this BMW. Man, I got 10 racks on me. It's, I'm, I'm finna pull a woman. Like, nah, that's, I don't want, I'm trying to slide the Barnes and Noble, go see what she talking about. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to get a woman that's trying, trying to get me for my bag. So to, um, to, to, to answer your question is, is, it's just about his mindset. And it's, it's, if he's confident in himself, he's not going to have any other influences. Like, you know, so that's, that's just how I feel about it. Okay. So, like you just said, like, you know, you were a cake or whatever, and you guys make fun of you or whatever the case may be, this and that, X, Y, Z. So, why is it that when men go off to have sons, they want to make sure that their sons are having sex and that their sons are not gay, so they go out and send their kids out, they tell their sons, they tell their nephews, they tell their cousins, go have, you know, you ain't get you none yet, oh no, you ain't get none yet, y'all make fun of them, and y'all put them in a position to have an unhealthy relationship with sex, and it's not seeming as though that cycle is being changed, and I can say that honestly because I am 35. I have a brother that is, I have, I have brothers. I have a brother that's knocking on 40. And then I have my youngest brother is 20. That cycle has not changed in between that gap. And then I have cousins that are 16 to like, no, my youngest boy cousin is eight. I've heard my uncles or my cousins or even my in-laws say, Hey, boy, you ain't getting you none yet. He's 10. He's 10. What do you want him to do? And so then you go and then you wonder why when you wonder why women are damaged, women are hurt and stuff like that, because they run into a boy or whatever the case may be, thinking that they may have good intentions for them when it's all all just somewhere in their ear, sending them off and telling them, oh, you need to just go get you some. Y'all want to make sure your sons are not soft. You want to make sure your sons are not gay or whatever the case may be. So you send them off to have unhealthy sexual relationship relationships with sex at an early age. And that cycle is not changing. Now you might be one of few, but I'm I guarantee it's been a girl or two that many of men on this panel have maybe slept with knowing that they didn't have good intentions for. Let me, and they're not changing the cycle with their children either. Yeah, me to tap. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you wanna uh, go ahead, uh, I, I was just gonna enter like to come clean like that. That's a that that cycle you talking about that can that can stem from many things like i know exactly what you're talking about that can stem from many things from men trying to make sure they don't get hurt 
like men go off and they 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 probably gave their heart to a woman. It, it could be something as simple as they gave their heart to this girl in the seventh grade, and Shorty broke his heart. Um, like to be completely honest, she broke his heart. Now he out here dogging women every day. So, and same thing with the woman. The woman gave her heart to somebody. Now he now she out here dogging men every day. The importance of uh, of that is people are damaged out here. Like, of course that man is gonna say, hey, get you some, make sure you're not soft. First of all, that whole, the soft thing, that 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 stems from something else. We can get into that later probably, but that that being soft thing is because you you growing up in this world. And as a black man, you gotta, you gotta be strong. These white folks ain't cutting no breaks for you. People period not cutting breaks for you in your own community. But you talking about, with you talking about hurting people, it's a never ending cycle. Of people breaking each other heart, uh, like in in from from the knocking on forty to the eight year old, the the forty year olds telling the eight year old because he got his heart broke when he was younger. He's scared, so he gonna teach his the youngest not to be scared. Hey, nah, we nah, we ain't doing that. He putting fear in him because he he fearing that that he gonna get his heart broke and he don't know how to mend that because he didn't mend that within himself. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I feel I feel for you because that that I know that. I'm, but you you talking to a man that's just now learning at 27 how to look. God ain't he ain't connect common sense to me till I turn 27. So he he went in there he just put it together. So I'm like now I'm finally understanding like what it is like to deal with emotional like to deal with emotional damage. So you know, me I'm sorry. No, you good. It's good. I just want to tell me to let these brothers speak, girl. Uh <laughs> I just had some questions because you know, because me me and my husband was just got down got done talking about um we were just telling that to his brother. He was like, if y'all have a son, I'm gonna have my nephew with me all the time. We're gonna get all the girls. No, you're not. You're gonna not gonna tarnish my child. No, no, I'm not, we're not gonna do that. You know, because somebody tarnished you or somebody hurt you. I tried to tell, and I was in his life at an early age, and I tried to tell him, like, you know, take your time with the girls. Don't have sex. You know, try to wait till you're married. Like, that's that's the ideal goal. Because people are out here tarnishing themselves and putting unnecessary hurt on them because nobody sat them down and had these uncomfortable conversations about sex and emotions before that before the time you know like you gotta you gotta make sure that you are emotionally equipped to have sexual relationships with people i, I know tell it looked like tal got something to say Ooh, um, I'm itching. go ahead on i know you I'm gonna let you get yours, then I'm gonna close it out with the fun comment. Go ahead, go ahead, get it. Cool, cool deal. So uh, I want to echo uh, a lot of the things that the Rand said. Uh, I think that it is developmental. You know, it's it's it always comes back down to the relationship that you have with yourself. And I think when you have a, a question around why people do a certain thing, you got to look at the motives, right? What do we want as human beings? I think that one thing that we all want is to be loved, to be heard, to be expressed. Uh, accepted and to be valued right and, and if you look at our chakra system right your lower chakra is your root chakra and we get stuck there we get stuck there developmentally so uh it, it's, it's part societal because it is profitable to be stuck in your root chakra um but you know the, the reality of it that being there means that you derive value from sexual activity, right? So if you're if I'm valuable because I'm desired sexually, then that's one of my basic needs being fulfilled. That's what it looks like to me. And if I'm the person that says, yo, you need to go, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, find your little piece of pussy or something. Now I look like the person who knows that, you know, saying this is how you do it. Is, so now I'm valuable for giving that advice. So the cycle continues that way, right? I look like the player i look like it ain't been no problem if i'm telling you to do it it obviously ain't no problem for me you feel me so i think that where we derive our value from is going to determine you know how much how deep into this we live how much of this we we uh consume and put out right and, and i think that when 
we get to why we're we're stuck there development developmentally you got to also look at where our aspirations are where do we want to be in life what life are we creating right because that's going to determine our strategy how we align what what identity that we have with ourselves we want to be loved and we want to be cherished and we want to be valued but we don't realize that there is higher levels of value you're know saying of that you you can be unique to you right like your mission in life your purpose what are you passionate about right? If we derive value from that, if we derive value from our ability to serve one another, like how we're doing right now, we're going to be inspired and we're going to be motivated to do things like what we're doing right now versus, you know, saying being in a music video or whatever, selling sex, you know, saying because sex does sell. So I I also want to make it clear that, you know, different strokes for different folks get it how you live and everything like that. But my experience is that there is much more richness and and meaningfulness in having high aspirations and stretching yourself as an individual, because that's going to entice you to go deeper within. If you want to expand, you got to go within, right? Learn more about yourself, learn more about what's true and what's actually valuable and not just the things that are on the radio available for everybody. What is true for you, right? So I I think a, a, a lot of us have put that high on the priority because it's been in our grasp. We've been told we can't go but so high for so long. So we don't even look into it. We don't even ask any questions about what's more valuable to me about me than my sexual ability. You know, saying we don't we don't ask those questions. So we get stuck there. And if we want to look valuable to the next person, we want to feel and seem like we're in the know about what's going on and we ain't um (laughs) okay i got a couple points i want to throw out here we're gonna close this out um first i would encourage women that's my phone it will start going off hold on (laughs) all right so i would encourage i would encourage women Oh, 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 for Daryl, before you, yo, one more thing, bro. I will also want to say Go that ahead. it's a cycle and it's, it's not exclusive to the men, right? Because if you look, we got women, oh, he's going to be a little heartbreaker, right? He's going to have to break them off with a stick. I just want to throw that out there. Ooh. It's on both sides. We perpetuating the same thing. You know, you got a little girl. For, oh, you think you got a little girlfriend, huh? We, we both do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's it ain't it. That's it's toxic. <laughs> it's toxic. Oh yeah, let's do it. Since you open it up, let's do it. First, okay, cool. I'm let's break this down. First, I want to encourage women out there that's watching to that have questions or feelings that's similar to me. And number one, encourage them not to have babies, children with a man that does not possess values that you will want your children to have. Don't lay down and produce children with someone who are lacking in the qualities that you would like to see your children grow up with. That is, number one, that is your mindset. You can't then turn around, have a baby with this man who was, who over-sexualized you. That's how you got him. That's how he got you. And then turn around and say, why he teaching my son to do this to these little girls? Yeah, yeah. More than likely, <laughs> there was someone there on the female part that, that, that laid down with this man and found some of those qualities endearing. Which goes back to the next point. Women shop around for men who are good at sex, who have big penises and do things and eat it good. And come on, let's talk. Eat the booties like groceries. We're not going to act like this is a one-way street. So, um, and women, and when I say shop around, I mean shop. I mean, and then would encourage your girl. God, he did my, and again, I said this earlier, he did my hair, girl, he did my, he did it. And they would, yeah, I ain't gonna, I don't want to come down on my females, but it's real. And so I definitely want to say that if you want your young men to possess qualities that 
um, where they're able to exercise because I am pro sex. I am pro pro sex. Listen, I believe that if you're at an age where you can rightfully choose who you want to have sex with and y'all decide to hunch, that's y'all decision. If you grown, that is your decision to make y'all deal with the consequences. But I don't believe that it just takes one person to have sex. It takes two. And if you laying down with a partner, a girl who don't possess values that you want to see in your daughter, don't make babies with her and vice versa. I, yeah, but you know, hunch, I mean, if you're going to hunch, hunch. I don't want to say people, because to Tao's point, sex sells. We are living in a culture where everybody's doing it. I don't know no girls, really not a lot of y'all. Who not? Who ain't trying to? Who don't want to? Who wouldn't if they could get it? And would take yours if... Come on now. They would get your man fuck him and freak him and then send him back to you. We got a, a whole song that says... I take you, what's the song, Tammy? I take your man and take on the weekend and take his on the Thursday. And, and it's there. And and I'm not making it up because that same girl probably got a gazillion OnlyFans. Where she's selling the sex that we are telling the men not to buy. Come on, don't tell me not to buy what this girl is out there selling, and then you tell me to with you know find find the girls virtual. I need if you want to be deemed as a virtuous woman, show up as a virtuous woman. Encourage women to be virtuous. Encourage your nieces and your nephews, like uh Maurice encouraged his son to be good men. Encourage your nieces and your nephews, each one teach one, each one reach one. It is your responsibility. And if as a, a mother and uh, me, if you have any kids or whatever, it's your responsibility to protect them from misinformation, bad information, and so forth. It is a lie out of that going on. And if they turn on the TV or watch Real Housewives or Dog on, you can watch a cartoon. It's a cartoon called, uh, whoa, what is it on Netflix? The sex cartoon with the sex monster. Those it's called um Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Also get Big Mouth. Them kids in there 9, 10, 11 years old. And they have they got sex down to a science. <laughs> in some ways where I'm like, whoa, okay, I was not thinking and talking this way as a 11, 12 year old in grammar school. They not even at high school. So that lets me know that sex is here, it's here to stay. It is about how you educate these people, yourself, as well as your these offspring that's really going to have the greatest impact on who they become in the end. You can't stop a person from having sex if that's what they choose to do, but you can definitely educate them and arm them with the tools to number one, make good choices for themselves and good choices for their the person that they're sleeping with. Can I just throw in the piggyback off what you said about being, you know, if you want, um, I want a particular thing for your child, be careful who you lay down with. Also, us as parents, our kids watch us. So we can't, you know, say, I don't want my child to do, and I don't want my, you know, I, um, and I think Maurice was there when I shared this before on a panel, you know, my daughter was going through a particular situation in her life. And I was like, God, why? And just going off and, you know, and she going to hell and da, 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 da. And the Lord audibly said to me, but what about the revolving door of men that she saw? coming in and out of your house. And that was a moment for me when I was like, whoa. And it was just like a chin check. So yeah, we gotta be careful. Like you say, I can't sit up and say, don't, I don't want my child to do this and my child to do that. But then I lay down with somebody who doesn't share the same value, but also they watch us. 
So I had to, that was a turning point in my life. And I'm thankful, grateful and thankful, you know, that my daughter didn't go down that path, but you know, they watch us as well. They watch the village. They watch, you know, the village. My daughter's father wasn't in her life, but I never spoke ill about him to her. I never damned him to hell to her life. I never, they have a beautiful relationship now. And that's the other thing we can't even, we may have a particular experience and then I'm, we may have a particular experience with a child father, but we cannot. And I say this a lot to my black sisters and some of them don't like it. You cannot put that your experience on your children because you don't know what damage they may do. They have a beautiful relationship now. And I'm so grateful and thankful because she needs him. She's 26. She needs him. But we have to be careful of that also. So it's just, we, we, a village raised, you know, the village, she, he wasn't in her life then, but the men, my cousins and my uncles that were in her life still showed her what a good man is. And so the village as a whole is important. So that's all. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Whoo. Yo, y'all definitely gave me a lot to think about today. I don't think we got through all of the questions, so I do imagine that we will be doing a part two, even for this conversation as well as for the female conversation. But I definitely want to take this opportunity to thank this. You guys give yourselves a round of applause. You were amazing panel of guests um i definitely want to encourage anyone watching this to as i did for the the female go love on a brother go give him a hug go tell him he's valuable um we don't hear it enough you know um and it's better that we hear from close proximity before someone else out there in, in the world tells us and we're wooed away um by by their encouragement and affirmations affirm a brother out there today go let him know he's valuable to you go let him know that he's valuable to to the world that his life matters um and with that said i definitely want to thank my panel of guests uh tal joy delicia mia Thurin, erica tam <laughs> Janelle and Maurice I appreciate all of you guys and your wisdom um, I'm going to wrap up this episode by saying yo go check out the other episodes of Fiduro Speaks this is a Fiduro Speaks shirt we got Fiduro Speaks merch at FiduroOnlineShop.com you go on FiduroOnline.com we got all types of hot stuff for you go check out the other episodes and everything else that we got going on with the Paint the World Project at PWP, PWProject.org 